Um, so uh, we met last November. Uh, what happened since then? What are the two, three things that you would like to highlight? Let's start with the first one. Singularity Net has launched the beta version of its decentralized, you know, blockchain-based AI marketplace. We did this in late February, but this is no no means means our work is done. But it, you know, it's a it's a milestone achievement. It means we we have a scalable, you know, decentralized marketplace for for AIs, and now now we're working on rolling out improvements to the platform like a fiat to crypto gateway so you can buy AI services with fiat money and a bunch of other back-end improvements but we're also working on building supply for the network like re recruiting AI developers to put AI into the marketplace and demand for the network meaning people to want to use e these AI services and the desire to build demand for the network leads to the other two exciting things that, that, that I, I want to mention. One is Singularity Studio, which is a spin-off company aimed at making vertical market specific AI products for the enterprise, beginning with it with a finance and fintech product, where on the back end, the product uses the AI in this, in this decentralized network, but on the front end, you know, it meets the precise needs of, of customers, in, in this case, banks, insurance companies, and, and, and fintechs. And this, this, you know, from a singular network view, it's a way of driving demand for the AI, AI in the network. From the customer's view, it's just a way of getting better AI services, where you have a greater diversity of AI methods and more rapid uptake of, of, of new AI methods behind the product. So that's... Uh, Singularity Studio, which we're spinning off, which is, is being run by Cassio Panacin, who's been collaborating with me on AI for 20 plus years, about two thirds of the time I've, I've been doing it. We've also launched the XLab, the Singularity Net Accelerator, which is aimed at, at fostering tokenized projects of various sorts, leveraging the Singularity Net AI, AI backend. And th there's going to be a bunch of announcements in the coming month or two regarding specific projects to be launched within the accelerator, leveraging the AI and the Singularity Net Network. So, of course, the network can't be driven forever by projects that we spin off or that we accelerate in, a, in our accelerator, but this is a way of sort of kickstarting the thing and... Ultimately, what we need is a huge number of AI developers putting AI into the platform and a huge diversity of users using the AI in, in the platform. And then this decentralized protocol, you know, should become to AI what, what, what the Internet is to, to generic uh, messaging between, between computers or what BitTorrent is for peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. And specifically, as far as Malta is concerned, we announced yesterday a partnership between Network Society and Singularity Net uh, to allow uh, Singularity, Singularity Net uh, projects to take advantage of a new funding mechanism uh, of the DAT. Absolutely. So when we look at the formal structure of Singularity Net and the formal structure of various tokenized spin-off or accelerated and incubated projects that, that we are creating through the XLab Accelerator, we want to explore a variety of innovative structural and, and organizational models. And this brings us to technical issues, but also to legal and regulatory issues. When we look at SingularityNet itself, the basic idea from the beginning was to make SingularityNet a you know, a self-organizing digital biological organism where, you know, there's no one controller and there's no one organization of, of humans that is critical to the maintenance of the system, but rather, you know, the AIs participating in the network are maintaining the network for themselves and, and you know, the humans that are contributing code or, 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 or utilization they're in a participatory way maintaining the whole thing. And it doesn't need a single organization to host or run it any more than Linux, Linux fund, fundamentally does, or, or a protocol like BitTorrent fundamentally does. And 
right now we're partway toward realizing that mission, right? Right now there's a Singularity Net Foundation that I'm the CEO of, and most of the work on Singularity Net is by subcontractors or employees of the foundation. But this is a way of getting it off the ground. It's not, it's not intended as, as the final end state. But when you look at the legal and regulatory issues involved with creating something like Singularity Net, I mean, now, you know, we have a Dutch foundation and this Dutch foundation owns copyright on, on code and has some responsibilities re regarding what, what's presented in, in the marketplace interface and so forth. Now, it will be more in line with the original vision of Singularity Net to have Singularity Net be a pure DAO where you just have smart contracts, you have code, and you know the ownership doesn't have anything to do with specific humans. It, it, it's just with the whole network and any AIs or humans that participate in the network. And similarly, when projects are spun off from Singularity Net or new projects are created to leverage Singularity Net, I mean, there's no reason these projects need to have a traditional, you know, ownership and, and, and governance structure. These can be, you know, collections of smart contracts leveraging AI code that are designed to, you know, organize, grow, mutate, reproduce, co combine. We can do this with software now. We have the AI and we have the smart contract and blockchain infrastructure. And the legal and regulatory situation is, is evolving. So one of the interesting things we're talking with the government of, of Malta about, right, is, is creating a legal framework where certain kinds of decentralized autonomous organization can you know be fully valid legal entities so in what case could a bunch of ai smart contracts register themselves as a company get, get a bank account sue someone who, who wrongs them or right, enter into contracts on their on on on, on their own behalf i mean they hire a lawyer in order to, to exactly them. exactly or or hire an AI developer to train an AI lawyer to represent them next, right? I mean, uh, this is the opening uh, scene of Accelerando, uh, yeah. where the uh, intellectual property and patent rights uh, mm -hmm. of the protagonist are being negotiated by AIs. As exactly. He's sitting with smart glasses in Amsterdam and enjoying his afternoon. So the decentralized autonomous trust is one particular you know, legal and, and structural mechanism for, for creating decentralized autonomous organizations. And, you know, there should be a menu of different templates giving options. A decentralized autonomous trust is a quite interesting one that was, it was innovated by Network Society. And then when I saw that with my Singularity Net uh, hat on, I mean, I, I saw, wow, this, this is something that could be appropriate for projects that that, that are building on, on singularity net and need to you know need to acquire funding and need need, need to acquire more community participation developers pa partners and and so forth um, as we go uh, and uh, enable smart software to be ever smarter what is the level of introspection that uh, in your opinion it is going to achieve so to be able to understand that it needs improvement in order to better compete uh, in the AI space with its uh, uh, competitors uh, and as a consequence go out and hire uh, the human developer talent that for some time it is going to be still needed because it is unable to write its own code. And, and do you expect the orchestration um, uh, ability uh, to be part of uh, the, the Singularity Net platform itself, so that not only AIs but also humans are on the platform? I suspect the first DAOs to really be, you know, highly influential and profitable will probably end up being fairly narrow AIs with, with, narrow, with narrow business models. And I mean, many companies run by humans are like that, right? There's one trick. And they just keep repeating that trick over and over again, whether it's, you know, trading on a certain market or, you know, buying real estate low, hiring a repairman and then selling it high. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could think to script a business model and just lather, rinse, repeat. And you could do a whole bunch of those and some will succeed and, and some will 
and some will fail. So in that case, the intelligence is in the human or the meta level AI that's, you know, spawning off like an, an ensemble of simple companies with simple business models and simple machine learning algorithms and then cast them out in the world and see which ones make money and, and, and which ones survive. So I think I think that's probably the sort of place that it will it will start because you you could imagine easily a scripted media corporation right that you know it it puts an ad for writers to write stuff people answer that the writers write stuff it's posted online ads are placed there the writers they get more clicks get 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 more money and if more people are aggregated to that site then writers have a motivation to to put their articles there and this can be fully automated now a script that just does that of course, it wouldn't be able to pivot to a different business model when the world shifted. But but many human-run companies can't do that either. The company dies and another one comes about, right? So so that'll probably be step one. Of course, step two is more interesting, where you have more AGI behind the corporation, and it's not just executing a pre-scripted business model, but the AI within the DAO fully understands or reasonably understands the whole business context. So it can innovate new, new business models and, and new processes. That's also interesting. It, it, I think it will come later. But there, there's a whole host of possibilities. For example, this is pure speculation. But I was talking with you know David Hansen, my roboticist collaborator, who's co-founder of SingularityNet, about potentially in the future, you know, each robot that someone buys, say someone buys a, a home service robot say that that robot could be associated with its own DAO, right? And then then the DAO owns that robot and leases it to, to the to the individual. So actually, each robot could be its own company, which is a sort of it's a way to short circuit or shortcut the the difficulties of making robots be citizens. OK, it may be hard for people to accept robot citizens, but if each robot is operated by its own DAO, which can be legally registered somewhere, then each robot is its own autonomous company, right? So there's a whole whole spectrum of of possibilities, and there's a potential for Malta to play a central role in this part of the AI ecosystem, or the intersect of AI DAOs and and, and blockchain by being more progressive and open-minded in in the regulatory framework regarding DAOs and decentralized autonomous trusts and and whatever other new, new ideas pop up. Um, you were one of the pioneers of uh, AGI that is now becoming uh, more and more uh, accepted. Um, in open AI uh, is uh, uh, very uh, squarely going towards uh, AGI. I think they well. changed your name to closed AI, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> they, they have become partially closed, <laughs> at least, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and the uh, OpenAI LP Limited Partnership uh, announced that they will uh, limit the returns, they will cap the returns that uh, they generate to the partners to a mere 100x. Well, that's mighty wide of them. And, and, and the, the, the reason why they, they say they want to do that is because they say otherwise future AGI could potentially uh, capture uh, an excessive uh, percentage. I of mean, light some, some Altman and Elon that. Musk have a flair for public relations. I, I will, uh, I will yeah, tip Elon my hat, tip my not, hat to them, right? Not, Elon Musk is not involved anymore. Not, 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 not anymore. No, but uh, I mean, he was involved in, in, in creating the DNA and set, the God setting God. up the thing and, and pulling in the the original yeah. people. And uh, yeah, it, it may, it may have gone too far in the direction that he shoved it than, than even he wanted, right? No, I think from what I could tell, Elon Musk was really interested in AI risk and in, in, in having sort of sort of a hand in the AI space so he would understand, you know, what the risks of AI were. But then in the end, it became clear to him as everyone else concerned with AI risk that, wow, this is happening, right? Like we can worry about the destructive potential and we certainly should be thinking about it. But I mean, in, in, in the end, like we're, we're, we're not, we're not going to stop it. So it ended up a bunch of top AI guys from OpenAI got hired into Tesla to do practical self-driving car stuff. 
And now Sam Altman in OpenAI is saying, well, you know, if we want to really compete with the Googles, Tencents, Facebook, Alibaba's, Microsoft's of the world, you know, we're, we're going to need very large sums of money to hire a huge number of developers, get a lot of machines, get a lot of data. So we're going to take the easy way out and, uh, and we're going to close, close the open AI, move all the developers into the closed part and raise a huge pile of, of venture money. And I mean, that's a reasonable thing to do. Personally, I, I, I chose not to attempt to take that course because I'm a little more of a true believer in the sort of democratic anarcho-libertarian slash anarcho-socialist ideals that, that the, the crypto space has, has, been, has been, you know, full of, full of from, from the very beginning. I mean, it's certainly true, you know, if you raise billions of dollars from investors, in many ways you have an, easy, an easier time building your AI. You can buy a bunch of supercomputers, you, you can hire a huge number of developers, you can, you can, you can buy all the data you want in partnerships with large corporations. On, on the other hand, in the end, even if you have a capped return and, and a special understanding with your investors, I feel you're, you're going to be pushed toward a narrow business model because that, that's the way to, make, to maximize shareholder value. And I, I think I would, I would much rather see AI be like Linux or, 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 or BitTorrent and, or Ethereum or Bitcoin, like a decentralized platform that anyone can contribute to and anyone can benefit from with a, just a more, a more heterogeneous value system in it and, and a more, more heterogeneous set of contributors and, and users. So what, what we're doing, there's some resemblance to OpenAI, but the balance is different. So we're spinning off Singularity Studio which is a for-profit company, which is aimed at making a lot of money from providing high quality AI products and services to large enterprises. And we'll be spinning off a few other projects among the external projects that will be launched in the, in the accelerator. And, you know, these spin-off projects can have narrow goals and optimize toward those narrow goals. Some of them could be for-profit projects. It could have an acquisition exit strategy, a traditional IPO, an STO, right? But on the other hand, the underlying AI fabric, like the core AGI infrastructure, should be decentralized, owned, owned by everyone and no one, and ultimately should have some DAO-type legal and, and ownership structure. And that's different, because what OpenAI is doing is they're putting the bulk of the AGI development in the for-profit and then the nonprofit is serving more of a of a of a think tank and oversight type role. Whereas I, I think the the thinking the core thinking machine has got to be in the nonprofit decentralized DAO. And you can still make stuff that makes huge amounts of money for for investors applying this decentralized AI fabric to to appropriate it problems. Uh, this morning I had a conversation with Miko Nakamura that uh, had a very interesting uh, uh, result. We discussed how uh, open source communities look at externalities as uh, inefficient uh, and an opportunity for eating up the cost uh, that others are unwittingly paying for that inefficiency. And uh, given how inclusive uh, the blockchain communities are, and inherently uh, open source, at least traditionally speaking, uh, it would es explain a proportionally higher participation by people who are happy about the financial returns as long as there is a positive social outcome in the things that they do. And this speaks to what you just said about the fact that uh, an open source AI federation of initiatives uh, is more likely to stay on a right ethical course than not a closed uh, for-profit uh, uh, enterprise. A decentralized network is more likely to reflect the full, you know, glory, splendor, and hideousness of, hum of human values rather than to narrow focus on, on you know, optimizing the benefit of a tribe or or one country 
or one set of shareholders representing one product or something. Yeah, I mean, there's pluses and minuses to, you know, the whole value system of, of humanity. On the other hand, there's a lot of richness there that, that you're not getting when you look, when the value is maximized Google's shareholder value or maximize the, you know, the stability of the Chinese nation or something. I would, I would rather choose, you know, the whole unwieldy mess of human values, which has many depths in it that, that we can't even consciously plumb. Thank you very much for this conversation. I'm looking forward to the next one. And I am looking Absolutely. forward together with you of implementing the Singular Internet uh, Network Society DAT experiment yeah. uh, with multi a lot, a lot of these uh, visions are, are becoming real. And, it, you know, it's a privilege and a joy to be a part of, a part of this process. Thank you. Thanks.